Hi there, and welcome back to Triplicate. And we're taking a break from synthesizers to have a quick look at robots. Ah, uh, so here we have our robot kit. And we decided it's just going to go forwards and backwards. Too much trouble to make it to steer when you can get a, a kit that you just put together that's designed to steer. So, so far we've managed to it's a little driver board so we can drive it uh, using a uh, processor of some sort but a robot needs to see uh, so this one it needs to look out that way and that way and it like if something comes towards it this way it'll go that way and similar the other way now traditionally all the robots I've ever seen have used something like this to see with this is a an ultrasonic module which I bought for goodness a few pounds off eBay and um, it just gives a pulse out I believe the length of which tells you where the nearest object is um, and it works so far as it uh, as far as it goes however I built this. Now on our boat, Bonnie Mary, we have a holding tank that the toilet empties into um, and then we pump it out periodically and we have a tank gauge which she relies on something sliding up and down which is stuck. So I designed this ultrasonic one based around a microchip pick using the same things and there were problems with that, but I'm not going to get into that now because that's a different issue. However, it has recently come to my attention the good people at ST make a laser ranging system on a chip, which is this. And most importantly, it is the triplicate price of £5 mounted on a little board like this. And this is the guy, this little thing here. So I shall put this on a piece of paper and see if I can uh, zoom the camera in to have a better look at it. So there we go, that's as near as I can get uh, with the camera playing and focusing. And it's pretty small, so that those are my fingers coming into the shot, so it's yeah, there's my little fingernail and I don't have big fingers so it's a tiny little thing and it has a I think 940 nanometer near infrared laser on it which sends out pulses and it measures it has a detector on it which measures the time of flight which will be in nanometers so it's a pretty clever little thing and uh, it has an I squared C interface um, to tell the rest of the world what it's seeing. So what I am proposing to do is connect a laser ranging module to a nuclear board and a FTDI based serial to USB and USB to the computer and basically all this is going to do I'm going to send a command via USB and this is going to send the same command to this guy to set it up and similarly this guy is going to take a reading and the nucleo is going to send a message back over USB to the computer and we're going to do all the investigation on the computer. So this is I think the third project I've set up for a nuclear board and you'd think by now I'd be able to um, set them up and get them going um, second nature but no I had a terrible fight with this one uh, which I am fortunately for you going to spare you and we'll move straight on to the point where I had the basic blink code working in the nucleo 
and could start working on the code proper. And it builds it successfully. Yippee! So that's about a day's work to get that far. Right, should we see if we can run it? So here it is, it's plugged in and ready to rock. So we will go run debug as the AC6 mode, I believe is the one we want. Okay, done. So if we hit that, yay, we get a flashing LED. And let us stop it. Let's find this. Set the delay to a thousand. Run. There we go, we're ready to go. We hit the go button and it's flashing slowly now. Right, so we actually have working code in the Nucleo so we can actually start to do what we want to do. Okay, so here's the PC end. I pinched the serial class out of the super battery charger and I have a little message format um, which is a text string starts with hash as a text command in this case LED because for now I'm just turning on and off the um, little built-in LED on the nucleo board and then up to four uh, integers and that which is in C it's exclusive or I'm not sure what you're supposed to call it and of course LED zero I've called the, the little built-in LED and every second it either turns that on or turns that off. And the other end I'm calling the HAL UART receive IT function and I'm just asking it uh, to come back when it has one byte. And that's the function that's called when the interrupt and I just set RX busy as one. And it picks it up in the main code when it's sent, received one, and processes it. And okay, process messages looks for the LED message and uh, uses the value it gets to turn the LED on and or off, um, just to test it's working. Okay, and here she is. This is the little FTDI board with RX and TX and ground powered off the USB that's the little green LED which is all currently on because nothing's happening so shall we see what happens so if we go into run debug there we go and start her up okay the LED gone out no so if we start now the PC end okay she's good and we hit start and we can see with the little LED here that's getting messages from the PC and the green LED is turning on and off and if we Turn the PC end off again, yep, the light stays on and the messages stop. Right, so now it's time to connect this little guy up and see if we can talk to that with the I squared C. Okay, so there's me thinking you would just use the I squared C to put set up a few registers to tell it what you want to do and read some more registers to uh, get the data back but if you dig into this thing a little bit more and get down here it starts talking about the device app using an application program interface 
uh, giving you a set of high level functions to do all this stuff so let's have a look at this application programming interface well if we go here here we have the data sheet for the application programming interface and okay I've had a look through this and initial customer manufacturing calibration we don't need to do that's only if you're using it through some sort of a window which we're not so here we go well I think first that we need a to connect the thing to the nucleo and B we need to download and look at this application programming interface okay so here it is all wired up uh, it's a bit of a, a mess I know but we're only trying to get it working at this point up wire it up properly and I have not connected the X shut off for now because I believe it's uh, pulled high it's got a pull up on the on the board here so unless we actually specifically want to shut it off uh, we won't bother with this so let us see if we can fire up this API and uh, talk to it okay so let's have a look at this API well first I've added uh, the GPIO which it uses to tell you it's got a new reading uh, for you to read because the I squared C the uh, Nucleo is the master so otherwise it wouldn't know and the X shut down which we haven't connected but we've got it so we will need to generate the code okay let's open project because it's not open okay here we are project open now where's this API well I have put it um, in a separate folder by the source and include so let's go in here and the zip file uh, jzip extract here right now what's in there API So we really just want the API, don't we? Right, so I am going to take that and plonk that in there. Project build all. okay well it's built it uh, I now need to go through and see whether it has actually built our uh, API because I suspect it hasn't okay so the first time I built it it built all the libraries and stuff and didn't try and build the uh, API so the second time I asked it to build it it did try to build the API and cannot find the include file so I need to set an include path okay so here I am in project settings C++ build settings uh, includes gives us some nice include paths so let's just grab that include path add a new include path which we don't want all that I think we want that not with that in right shall we try again okay still can't find it I need to check that include directory is accurate 
Okay, so that include file is somewhere in platform. Now I realize somewhere in this API there'll be a document that'll tell me exactly what I should be doing here, but you know, let's just uh, get it wrong and work it out. Far more fun. So I have included that platform include in here as well. Okay, so I now think I have all the files I need to compile the API. And I think I've, I have pointed to all the include directories I need to point to. So shall we try and compile it again? Build all. Okay. And we get a few errors and warnings. So let's scroll back up here. And what is this? What is this? Fatal error windows.h no such file or directory. So hang on. Hang on. Is this API actually intended to be used on the PC? It must be. Why would you include windows.h on an embedded system? Windows.h. So, what are you supposed to do on the embedded system? So, can we abandon using the API and just use a register map as I've done with, I think, every I squared C based device I've ever used and <laughs> thing is ST don't provide a register map um, and I found here on the internet a register map but as you can see the documentation is not exactly comprehensive I can just see myself spending ages trying to figure it out so I don't really want to go down that route unless I can find a, some really comprehensive documentation. Uh, so I started hunting around on the internet, looked on a few forums, and nobody anywhere had a good word to say about this API. It's overcomplicated, obscure, difficult to understand. Um, and at some point somebody uh, obviously contacted XT support about this saying well why can't we just use a, a, a register map and this is their reply VL53 LOX is a complex device registers description is not possible for this device due to complexity it contains hundreds of registers with interdependence and not straightforward content okay then the choices being not to provide a registers list but in instead develop a friendly their words api you can download load api and users manual yeah 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 i've done that getting nowhere and yet further digging revealed this little guy uh, which is a plug-in board which goes on a nucleo and has uh, one of these little range sensors and a display and you can plug two satellites in etc and these guys are 33 34 pounds of Farnell so right at the moment I'm not inclined to buy one um, and if we go down to the bottom and if you looked at this video uh, I'll leave a link to this page in the description it will show you just putting firmware into the Nucleo as a, as a binary. Um, no code for the Nucleo at all, and it's all done in the PC. Uh, so what's going on here? Is this thing just entirely designed to make PC peripherals? Who knows? And even further digging re reveals something possibly a bit more hopeful which is a software package for that little plug-in board that is part of that is an extension to the cube mx 
Um, so can we do it that way? Can we just include this in the cube MX, recompile, get that to, to regenerate all the code? And we have the API actually available to us. So after a fight, I get sorry, I try and do get software. You understand I'm getting a bit frustrated at this point with all this, getting not getting any joy on something that ought to be reasonably simple. Uh, because it says get software so I've put my name and my email in and hit download and nothing happens probably due to the fact I tried to register put a password in and then when I tried to use the password it said it wasn't long enough well you could have told me that when I created it uh, so in the end I did it off my tablet using my gmail uh, account and putting a different name in just for um, just for safety so here we have this is a zip file so here we have this cube MX passage Q X cube whatever package as a zip file so if we go to software packs manage software packs I think that's us from local we're trying to do that yet yeah, we get into triplicate directory usefully and coincidentally not because I tried it already so that is the one we want to do and we hit open and oh dear so I suspect somewhere in that zip file there is what I need to get it working but I've got to the point where I've had enough I want to do something else okay so I think I'm gonna leave it there um, a bit disappointing bit of a fail but I thought oh I'll just fire this up for a quick video we'll have a play with this and after spending some considerable time playing around with it I've got nowhere so I've had enough so for now I'm going to give up and move on to something else so for now that I'm afraid we're going back to that however I do actually notice that the uh, listing that I bought it off came with example Arduino code so I might possibly connect it up to the Arduino and see if I can get it working with that uh, but that will be a future video so for now it's um, goodbye from triplicate home of interesting electronics goodbye <laughs>